today. From Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. It's week four of the NFL on EA Sports. see Mac Jones and the New England Patriots taking on Zach Wilson and the New York Jets. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Mass. All the success in New England over the last few decades, and this crowd has never been more enthusiastic. A moment ago, the Pats emerged from their locker room. They are set as they'll square off with the New York Jets. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Patriots team entering play. We're in October now, so everything, everybody should be coming into form, shouldn't they? They really should, and what you have now is a full routine established about what you want to get done and full focus on the season. Meanwhile, for the visiting Jets, they were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row.
Seems like we were just starting training camp, but here we are in October, and off we go on EA Sports. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. First and ten, it's Wilson. On the slant, he's got Davis. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. As tight ends go, he might not provide the super flashy plays very often, but he's pretty reliable. Usually an excellent target and normally catches what's thrown to him, but he didn't on that play. And I like the idea here. Get the ball in his hands, even if it's in the passing game. Three catches a week ago, and he does a nice job here to pick up yardage. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. This defense not fooled one bit on that touch pass. And this has become one of those kind of in vogue plays, you know, kind of like the shuffle pass was a few years ago. This one never got off the ground, but you understand why a lot of teams are running it. These wide receivers, a lot of them, they run like running backs with the ball in their hands. So many times we talk about coverage, we're just talking about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it, in this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. And he is going to have a Jets first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So that's what that elbow in my ribs was all about. You thought they were going to throw the ball as well. Absolutely. I think everybody thought they were throwing the football and caught him off guard. Yeah, I'm telling you, when you have the courage to make that type of a play call, a lot of times you actually get rewarded. I think that's how this defense is going to need to play these tight ends. Again, get right up on them and stay physical. And that paid off on that play, helping force that incompletion. On second and ten, Wilson. They'll find Hines out of the backfield. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. I'm not sure that this play was designed for him specifically, but they got through the progressions and got the ball to him. So second catch on the drive. He may not be a primary guy, but they definitely want him involved, don't they? Uh, absolutely. This early, the opening drive, as you said, two catches. So if they can get him going in the passing game, that should open up his running game, too. game always disappointing when you miss a field goal but when you're playing against a defense this good you and I both know that's a crucial miss because you can't afford to leave any points out there you've got to take them when you can after the missed kick they're in really good position they'll begin this drive at the 39 now Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at the 39-yard line. A handoff to Harris to begin the drive. Pass midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. The CD a lot of times like to separate speed and quickness, and they've got a back that's both. We know that he's fast in the open field, but man, his first step is so quick, too. It is something, isn't it? Because you think of that type of speed getting to the perimeter and turning upfield, but also when you run those inside runs, he can get into the secondary so fast the linebackers don't have a chance to react. They'll run with Harris. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. 
A look at the numbers for Harris in last week's game. Just downright unbelievable. I mean, when you amass that many yards, I don't know what else to say. Personally, I thought it was a game for the ages for him. Ripped off some long runs in that contest, didn't he? He did indeed. Some very long runs in that total. Scary. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. That's pretty much mean potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at them and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all. Challenging that defense. And on that go-around, the offense won the challenge. Now a first down carry for Harris. Dante Hightower on the stop. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. They'll run, here's Harris. And not much, maybe a yard down to the 23. Third down, Harris. And down inside the 15 he goes. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and 10. A give to Harris. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. No score after one on EA Sports. First and goal at the one. Harris is into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. And he was excellent on that drive. He deserved to be the one to get across the chalk. Oh, I agree with you totally. A workhorse on the drive. And how about that last decisive run to punch it in? And here's Tucker McCann now for the PAT. And he gets it to make it 7-0 Patriots. So that drive goes eight plays. And it was Damian Harris who finished things off with a touchdown run. Cannes got it teed up. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. Back onto the field come the New York Jets for their second drive. Now they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? 
On second down, right back to Hines. And there is nowhere for him to cut back as he's taken down in the backfield. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. Now it's Wilson. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Schultz. And he's going to be stopped here a few yards short of the first as the tackle is made at the 33. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. On fourth down, punt coming from Braden Mann. And he was called on three times in the win last week as his first one here's away. That's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Damian Harris of the Patriot offense ready to take over again. First month of the season, those numbers pretty solid. Does he continue that? I think so because when you come out of the gate this strong, that means that you have planned for it and you like the results that you're getting. So I wouldn't have any doubt that the head coach, offensive coordinator, actually called in and called him in and said, look, you're our guy, okay? We're going to continue to stick with this as long as we're winning games. You ready for the challenge? And then they presented it to the rest of the team. I think we'll see plenty of that as the season moves on. And I'm sure he said challenge accepted. He's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. This is Harris. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. Now the Patriots will use the second of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. generous one he looks to be about a yard or so short three yards won't be enough here as that'll bring up fourth down you know we might start getting some props here in the booth you know that one that says the d and then the fence that you put up next to it how about that they brought out the jumbo package and still couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage enough to pick up that first down. impressive they were ready defensively for that jumbo set they're going for it this is harris and he'll be stopped right at midfield Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. Coming up at halftime, I'll go from one personality, that's you, Charles Davis, to another one in Orlando, the coach. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL. You and Jonathan Coachman, both larger than life. No doubt about it. But you're stuck with me in this booth. <laughs> yes, and he's I miles am. away and smiling. And happy. On second down, it's Harris. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. And they're going to speed things up here. They'll run on first down. Harris. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. First down, Harris, and he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down, the last run good for two. Here's second and eight. They run with Harris. Even with that broken tackle, he'll be brought down short of the 15. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. 
So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, we'll get back to you guys in a bit. But first, let's take a look around the NFL here on this first Sunday of October. We'll start up in Orchard Park, a couple of blue-collar cities doing battle. Pittsburgh at Buffalo. And it's the Steelers out in front in the second quarter. The Steelers trying to finish that one off and claim victory. From there, let's head to the foot of the Rockies, Denver, Colorado, to check in on the Broncos. And they have the lead in that one over the visiting Indianapolis Colts. A touchdown run there for Javante Williams. Lastly, let's get to the Windy City, see what's happening with the Bears at home at Soldier Field. And they were winners in that one over the visiting Miami Dolphins. Justin Fields, three touchdown passes as his guys stay unbeaten on the year. Meanwhile, in our game, just the lone touchdown accounting for all the scoring. A tight one, 7 0 is the score. And for the call of the second half, we send it back to our broadcast team of Brandon Gotten and Charles Davis. So here we go for half number two. The Patriots with the lead, and they will be getting the football. This will be fielded inside the five. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Damian Harris to the Patriot offense, ready to take over again. And he's sure looking like a lock for a 1,000-yard season. Don't know if he's going to get it in this game, but he'd probably like to just to get past that point. Yeah, and if he doesn't, as you noted, there's still time, still opportunity. There's still more games to be played. So, yeah, it's not a lock, but barring injury, it certainly looks like he's going to get there. And what an accomplishment that is. Anytime you get over 1,000 yards, you're celebrated in the NFL. It's been quite a season. Still a couple chapters left in that book, though. First down, and they go back to Harris. Taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. 155 yards on the ground for him so far. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. On the give, this is Harris. He'll get only a couple down to the 44. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. On second down now, it's Harris. Give him six yards on the carry. It's going to be third and three now. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. On third down. It's Harris, and he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. Well, partner, what do you think? It might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. Yeah, boy, the strength on display there as he rumbles through tacklers for a gain of about eight. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge. And that's probably exactly what he's telling him in the huddle right now. Not too many more ideal situations at second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. They'll run on first down. Harris. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Can we just take that run and turn it into a, kind of a clip and save? Because that tells you everything you need to know about this drive. They've been moving the ball awfully well. On second down, Michelle. They stay with it. Keep pounding the football. Keep driving. Keep grinding. Yeah, even down in the red zone, keep going for it. No doubt about it. Dance with what brung you. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he'll 
take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. Damian Harris, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Patriots take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. That seemed pretty ideal there for the offense, Charles. You take a little bit of time off the clock here in the third quarter, decent length drive, and you pad your lead as well at the end of it. And what it does is lets you feel like you're in control of this game even more so than a two-touchdown lead, right? Because you have taken that time off, as you noted, which means they couldn't get you off the field. You ran your playbook the way you wanted to, and you gave your defense some rest. What a big-time drive in that situation. McCann for the point after. And it's good to make it 14-0. A 10-play drive that time. And it was Damian Harris who finished things off with a touchdown run. McCann's got it teed up. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. So here's the Jets offense now as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now urgency has to start setting in. You can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially, but you have to do it without pressing because pressing, that'll lead you into bigger errors. So quickly all the way up at the 40-yard line. They run with Hines. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. He had had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Throwing on second and three. Wilson, and his throw here is incomplete. He's had trouble finding open receivers all game, CD, and that's because really there hasn't been any. This defense has been all over him. Yeah, they're one of the better defenses in the league, and every time I talk to someone, the NFL, they all say the exact same thing. They're so fundamentally sound, it's hard to execute against them. And he is going to have a Jets first down, and he was able to get it by plenty. A gain of eight on third and three. And that's going to do it. Clock hits zeros. They're not going to get another playoff. Time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Well, throw on first down with Wilson. And that would off the mark behind him. Incomplete. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Throwing again here, Wilson. Crowder's got it over the middle. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. Good yardage on the completion there. And when they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Wilson's throw taken in there by Crowder. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 12-yard line. Nice game there, partner, but you and I both know that won't do anything for the final score. They're not going to win this one. Right now, they're playing for pride and fantasy points. <laughs> and just to erase that goose egg, nobody wants to be shut out. That's complete as he goes right back to Crowder. Down to the six-yard line on a pickup of six as he gets halfway to the goal line. Second and four. They could still get a first down without scoring. 
Here's Hines. And he's going to take it in for a Jets touchdown. Naeem Hines, his first touchdown on the year. And the Jets are finally on the board here in the fourth quarter. So how about that for an answer? They get the touchdown there, and it's back to a one-score game here in the fourth. And that's what these guys have done all game long because they've scratched and slashed their way to stay in this game. And by now, we should all realize they're not going away. Now the pressure again swings to their defense because they're going to need to find some way to get the ball back. Now for the extra point, Daniel Carlson. And that one makes it 14-7. to So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it's capped off by a touchdown run of six yards. Following the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Carlson. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. So here are the Patriots to take over. They're on a three-game winning streak and right now looking good in this one as well. They'll start on the ground with Harris. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. 215 yards rushing for him now in the afternoon as he just continues to pummel this defense. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Didn't get to the sticks, but that's an ideal carry there on first down, isn't it? I mean, now you're second and one. Although, you know, in the NFL, even if he picked up the first down, I don't think it's a big difference because the clock doesn't stop. Yeah, not like college. Right. If it's college football, you want to be, second and one is probably better than picking up the first down because in college football, the clock stops with every first down. It actually aids the defense in that situation. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. First down, Harris, and he's taken down inside the 30. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. They'll run on first down. Harris fights him off. The Jets going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. He'll get two on the keeper, but it becomes now a third down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk-reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. Okay. 
An eight play drive to this point. So here's play number nine on third and seven. They hand this off to Harris. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. It's just short. He got six of the seven he needed, so that leaves a decision here on fourth and a yard. He's hit pay dirt a lot this year, but not that time. Yeah, I'm tracking right there with you. You're exactly right. He's found the end zone plenty of times. No way I can find any fault with the call. He may not have scored there, but of course you're going to give it to him. They run for it with Harris. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. So this will wind up a victory for the New England Patriots. And you look back over the score sheet, interesting. A very clean game, no turnovers by either side. An absolute rarity when we watch games now because defenses have put such an emphasis on taking the ball away. Well, what we saw here was offenses spending their time saying, look, you know they're coming for it. Ball security is paramount. So they worked on that, not just a week of practice, but I'm sure all during training camp. Make sure when you have it, tuck it away because danger lurks everywhere you turn. So for New England, that early momentum continues here as they...
tonight from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. It's time for Monday Night Football on EA Sports. We'll see Mac Jones and the New England Patriots taking on Matthew Stafford and the Los Angeles Rams. From a venue that's been sold out since it opened back in 2002, there's a look at the home of the Patriots, Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Mass. A moment ago, the pride of Massachusetts, the Patriots, introduced to this, as always, sold-out crowd as they get set to go head-to-head -head with the Los Angeles Rams. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Patriots team entering play. It's been all systems go in this first month. They're off to a 4-0 start. And as Scott folks believe that this is a team that's built to go all the way. You can't win the Super Bowl in September, but they're telling everyone that they're going to be there in the end. Meanwhile, for the visiting Rams, we're in October now, so everything, everybody should be coming into form, shouldn't they? They really should, and what you have now is a full routine established about what you want to get done and full focus on the season.
first quarter of the season already in the rearview mirror, and off we go in week five on EA Sports. And no run back here on the opening kickoff as we'll start at the 25. So out come the Rams now for their first possession. They'll be led out by a former Pro Bowl quarterback out of the University of Georgia, Matthew Stafford. On first down at Stafford. And his first pass is incomplete. This defense for the Patriots, they really played well a week ago in that win over the Jets. And they needed to be because the game was a game we don't see very often anymore. Low scoring, slugging it out in the trenches. One play can make the difference type of a game, and each play took on more importance, and they got it done. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Now it's Stafford. He'll get this into the hands of Van Jefferson. And he is going to have a Rams first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. On first down, Stafford here. And this is taken in by the tight end, Bryson Hopkins. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Stafford hooking up with Akers, and he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape, or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area. But they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. The numbers for him from a week ago. 14 carries, 70 yards. I can't remember the last time we did a game and a coach didn't talk about establishing the run first, but they've lost two straight games, so they still want to do that, but they've got to have some contingencies, some other options. Expect them maybe to throw it a little bit to open up things and maybe run it a little bit more later in the game. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage, and that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Normally, he's pretty reliable. Usually catches what's thrown to him. On that play, he simply dropped it. Here's a run with Akers on second down. And he's got about five yards as he's taken down right at the 25. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. A shotgun snap for Stafford. Looking underneath, he's got Akers. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 13-yard line. Oh, there's going to be a little bit of regret there because they certainly had the chance to get off the field here just giving up a field goal attempt. But they couldn't get that stop on third down. Now they have to hunker down because guess what? That drive continues. From the red zone now, Stafford. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head. Not be Touchdown! That's caught at the two. Robert Woods, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Rams take it right down and score on the opening drive. Now this is a crew, they've come out flat their last two games, both losses, but just judging by the energy level, they look different here early, and that touchdown shows how. Yeah, it seems to me that that touchdown gets them off the treadmill. Because, you know, you, you've been on the treadmill. I've seen you work out. You go forever and ever, and it tells you you've gone somewhere, but you really have. You're in the same spot. They've exchanged it for an escalator. Still got some hills to climb, but they can get there. These are good analogies. I run outside sometimes, though. You know, get, get some fresh air, a little sun on your face. A little, a little wind in there. 
there. Yeah, that's right. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This will be fielded inside the five. And able to break this out all the way to the 38-yard line. Great return. So here come the Patriots to take over on offense. They're led by their quarterback from the University of Alabama, Mac Jones. Mac Jones absolutely believed in himself coming out of high school. Went to Alabama despite the fact there are many high-profile quarterbacks already on the roster and blossomed into a Heisman Trophy candidate in his final season with 41 touchdowns and only four interceptions. Steady, consistent as a passer, doesn't have the biggest cannon for an arm, but can stretch the field and lay those passes in on the deep ball. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. the ground it's Harris and he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. I know what you're thinking out there I know a lot of you are thinking take a shot downfield it's a great spot for it I'd say maybe later in the game definitely in the second half but right now I think they're just trying to get some momentum built get a first down pick it up and keep moving. They give him four yards there it'll be second and six. Second down, this is Harris. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. After 1-7-0 on EA Sports. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. This is Harris. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. The former Maryland Terp, Jermaine Carter Jr., had the tackle. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. On second down, it's Harris. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. 40 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. We should mention, to go along with a great game he had last week, he was rightfully named AFC Offensive Player of the Week. And he shares that with his offensive line, the tight end, his fullback. He's looking for more and more of that in this game. Even with that broken tackle, he'll be brought down short of the 15. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. On second down now, it's Harris. Got a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. come in. Looked like one of the Patriots might have moved. Still well, that's a tough, costly penalty because now it makes it third and six after the false start. Here's Harris. And he gets the first down yardage before he's brought down just outside the 10 at the 11. Plenty of things to talk about here, partner, but to me, their defense gave up a touchdown on the first drive. How about how they're responding, coming back? That's a big third down pickup to keep their drive alive. Now a first down carry for Harris. And able to get him inside the five here, just inside the five to about the four. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? And yeah, the Patriots are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. 
First and goal and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. They'll try to run with Harris. And he's in. Touchdown, Patriots. Damian Harris, his 11th touchdown of the year. And the Patriots are within an extra point of tying this one up. Extra point by McCann, up and good. And we are tied here in the second quarter. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. Taken at the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. After the long touchdown drive we just saw, you wonder if maybe that's taken a little of the win out of this offensive sales because they had it going pretty good last time, too. Had to sit over there for a little while, didn't they? You know, they were eager, amped up to get back on the field after just scoring, hoping to get the ball back quickly. That didn't happen, so I'd say come out, just kind of get started again. You know, it doesn't have to be anything dramatic. Just get moving, get loose again, and see if they can get it downfield. Second down, they'll go with Akers again. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. Third down, now even tougher. Third and 13 after that loss of a yard. Stafford going to give this to Akers. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Obviously an important run to avoid the three and out on your own side of the field. Shows a lot of faith in that offensive unit, doesn't it? That you want to run the ball in that situation. Pick up the first down. Also helps out your defensive guys a little bit, too. Allows them to get at least one more series of downs in order to get some rest. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Stafford. Over the middle complete. That's Woods. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. On first and 10, Stafford. Got a man. It's Higby complete. And all the way down to the nine. A big play there just before halftime. It's not often that you'll find offensive and defensive guys that'll agree on much, but one place they find common ground, you've got to protect or attack the middle of the field. And no one was there. What a big play moving it downfield. The Rams going to be forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. On second and goal. Stafford, and it's complete. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Van Jefferson as the first half is winding down. And the Rams have taken the lead. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front. And now, see on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter. Now Myers for the extra point. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drives seven plays in length. And the result for the Rams, a touchdown. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25.
New England with a first down as they begin the drive. As they take over here with 11 seconds remaining. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. Jordan Fuller there to take him down. So we are at halftime here on a Monday night as we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and Charles in a minute. But first, time to give the folks at home a look at what's going on around the NFL. We'll get our tour started out at Venerable Soldier Field in Chicago, where you see the final score there. Colin Kaepernick, four touchdown passes in the victory. From there, we head down to sunny Miami to check on the Dolphins at home at Hard Rock Stadium. And things didn't go so well as it was the visiting Raiders who come in and grab the victory. Josh Jacobs, well over 100 yards on the ground with a pair of touchdown runs. Lastly, we're off to the Rocky Mountains, Denver, Colorado. See what's happening with the Broncos. And they were winners in that one over the visiting Arizona Cardinals. Teddy Bridgewater leading the way in the victory with three touchdown passes. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back-and-forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half for the answer? We turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay.
Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. The Rams going to get the football first here, and they look to build on their lead as the second half gets started. And we will not have a run back here as the second half starts with a touchback. Well, the Patriots take it over to start quarter number three. And they do trail, but they have a chance to possess the football first to try and do something about it. And that certainly makes it something of an important drive for them because is it going to win the game? No, but you have to do something to bring some life to your sideline. 80 yards rushing now for the NFL leader coming into this ball game. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. The more football I watch, the more I want to check and see if teams are going to panic when they're down on the scoreboard. And this team has shown no signs of doing that. A lot of the time, they come out after the half, things haven't worked so well in the first go around, they want to throw the football like crazy. But the way to open up throwing the ball is to run it. And they've run it well here to start the second half. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. A gain of four last play. They double that here and get eight. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. On first down, Harris. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. A nice run there, nine yards. And it'll be second down. This is Harris. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is what every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. They'll run on first down. Harris. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Call it a gain of four there, so it sets up a big play here. Third and a yard. But really, that was no surprise there. They've been running it well all game. And I know goals change all the time, but any team will take that type of run each and every time. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. I like this focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. Now a first down carry, it's Michelle. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. I don't care what the emphasis is in the NFL at any given time, every defense is still gonna say their number one goal every game is stop the run. And right now, they're not doing that, and that really chips away at your confidence. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. He had a really solid first half running the football and picking up where he left off here in the third quarter. How about the yardage he's piling up right now? This feels like a full game, not just the series that we're watching right now. I know people are screaming, where are the adjustments from halftime on the defensive side of the ball? Sometimes they're just not there. Sometimes you just got to find a way to tackle someone. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. On the give, this is Harris. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. On third down, here's Harris. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. A looming decision to make on the conversion down seven, but first things first, they need to score as they come up on first and goal. Harris will take this one in. Touchdown, Patriots. 
We are set up for a fantastic finish now. A fourth quarter touchdown here. We're an extra point away from a tie football game. And I know they're thinking about possibly going for two, but I'd go ahead and kick this one and just get it back to level. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. That one was an extended drive, 14 plays all told. And it was Damian Harris who finished things off with a touchdown run. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Let's go, boys, let's go. Getting set to go again, Matthew Stafford trots back onto the field. And he had the touchdown on the last drive, also four for four. Very, very effective. What does he need to do to translate that forward into this drive? Not think that what he saw in coverage his last time is exactly what he's going to get again. He's got to play ahead and start, and start thinking to himself, okay, we just did that. What are they going to take away now? What do we go to as a counter and continue to encourage his offensive line to continue to give him time? They were really good on the last drive. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. He'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one. It might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. Stafford on third down. Got an open man finding Jefferson. And he is going to have a Rams first down, and he's going to have it by plenty. Able to get eight yards there on third and two. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed, picking up the first. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, that's when you lean on your stars. And he came through with a nice catch right there. They'll run on first down with Akers. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. From the 50 at Stanford, they'll set up the screen here to Akers. Give him five on the screen play, and that'll set up a third down. Boy, that was certainly well read defensively, and the key to any screenplay is space to work, and there was none to be found there, and they tackle him for just a short game. From the gun on third down, Stafford. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Jonathan Jones, and the Pats are going to have the short field here as they'll take over right at the 50. But we say it often, Charles, but not all interceptions are created equally, and that is a big one here in a tie ball game in the fourth quarter. And Brandon, when games are this close, it usually comes down to the team making the fewest mistakes, and that was one of our mantras back at Tennessee. Coach Major say all the time, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. You've got to cut those down to give yourself an opportunity. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. And even 150 yards rushing for him now as his big night continues. Getting down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So the Patriots with the football as we get you reset. They've got it first and 10 as they search for a go-ahead score. First down, and they go back to Harris. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. And they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. They'll run. Here's Harris. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. I like the call there because that was one to take time off the clock and get them closer to getting out of here with a W. In the mind of the play caller, all you want to hear is tick, tick, tick. On second down, it's Harris. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. The Rams calling on their nickel set here defensively for third down. 
They hand this off to Harris. And he gets the first down yardage before he's brought down just outside the 10 at the 11. to use their third and final timeout as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. Working with a second and four. They'll run with Harris. And that's a touchdown as they broke in our tie here in the final minute of the fourth. Did you see them hold up four fingers at the start of the fourth quarter? They were ready. They were definitely ready. They may or may not have done that, but they certainly have played that way. The fourth quarter has belonged to them, and now the lead belongs to them as well. McCann now for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. So the drive there took six plays, and it's capped off by the late touchdown. It's a seven-point lead here in the final minute of the game. McCann's got it teed up. Time a factor here late. He'll just take a knee and they'll start things out at the 25. So now Stafford and the Rams down 21 14. A little under a minute to go. And they're in danger of a third straight loss as they come up on first and 10. Meanwhile, Stafford's throw is complete into the hands of Higby. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Stafford. A big play there on the catch and run. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Stafford now to throw. Open man right side is cup complete. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Now it's Stafford. That's out to the flat for Akers. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. So they'll get eight out of that completion, and it'll make it second down. Now Stafford. Incomplete, and we're down to eight seconds now. With no timeouts left, that's a dangerous proposition working in the middle of the field. Fortunately for them, that one fell incomplete. Back to throw. Going for it all. And this nearly intercepted. Probably should have been. Had he caught it, it would have sealed it. Instead, one more chance coming up on fourth down. One last throw here for Stanford. Trying to find Cup, but it's intercepted. Picked off inside the 10. And the Patriots are going to hang on on the final play. They get the turnover to seal this football game. Well, we were on hand for a fun and entertaining game here. Coming down really to that last play. Great job defensively to get the pick and seal it. And we know that every play during a game matters. You're never sure which one's going to be one of the key ones. But at the end of the game, when you analyze it, three, four, five plays are going to be the ones you focus on. And that last play was one of them. The last shot had to take it. And they came up with the interception and sealed their victory. So for the Patriots, they improved.
today from MetLife Stadium in New Jersey. It's week six of the NFL on EA Sports. Jets taking on Mac Jones and the New England Patriots. Take the Lincoln Tunnel through Weehawken, through Secaucus, across the Hackensack River, and you'll arrive as we have at MetLife Stadium at East Rutherford, New Jersey. A few minutes ago, the hometown Jets were introduced to this sellout crowd, and it's a roar that could be heard across the river in Manhattan. They're set to go as their Jets will match up with the New England Patriots. Hi again, everyone, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you look at this Jets ball club. They come in losers of two straight, so they're trying to right the ship here a little bit. They're teetering a little bit, aren't they? And now things could really go south if they lose this game, so they understand the importance of playing well and stopping this streak. On the other side of the field for the visiting Patriots, they're off to a terrific start, unbeaten at 5-0 through the first month of change. And you can hang a lot of this early success on their defense too. They're the tone setters for these guys, and the entire team feeds off of what they do. Set to go now in week six of the NFL season, and we are underway on EA Sports. From the 10. And all in all, a pretty solid return. Nearly got it to the 35. They'll mark him down officially at the 34. So now here comes the Jet offense as they get ready to take over. They're led out by a former number two overall pick in the draft from BYU at Zach Wilson. Would you say that last week's performance by him, workmanlike in terms yeah. of numbers? One touchdown, one pick, but obviously a loss. Yeah, and that's the bottom line for him. All he cares about is how do we find a way to win the game. Maybe he leans on a few other parts of the offense and hopefully springs a receiver or two free. They go over the middle, and it's complete to start the drive. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. This defense for the Pats, they were terrific last week in the win over the Rams. This defense certainly has a lot to be proud of coming off of last week's game because when you only give up 14 points in a contest, you give your team a great chance to win. The best defense in the league is usually going to average giving up 18, 19 points a game. So to be under that, a terrific achievement. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. From the shotgun, Wilson. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. These two teams met up earlier in the year, back in week four, and it was the visitors getting the win there, so they'll be looking for the sweep back here at home. Naeem Hines, his first carry, and he's going to be met at about the 43. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. From the gun, it's Wilson. And that one goes incomplete on the drop. That's one he definitely normally catches. Fourth down. It went with the dime look that time on defense. Just flooded the field with defensive backs. Blanketed everyone. Took away all the passing angles. Thus, the incompletion. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this will remain a scoreless game. Partner doesn't seem like it, but that's a tough spot for a kicker. First drive of the game, and they're calling on him. He should be warmed up. He should be into the game, but sometimes it's almost like, oh, what, now already? Can't they put it in the end zone? What's going on here? Yeah, he's probably saying, if you can't get it in the end zone, can you give me a 30, 40-yarder? <laughs> a long one, and he can't connect. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. 
pretty much unreal, not just in terms of yardage, Charles, but also throwing the three touchdowns as well. When you put the whole package together, I can make you a pretty good guarantee right now. He's going <laughs> to see that? a few more people in the box every time he lines up. Yeah, I don't think that the defense has any choice. They've got to stop him. Can't let a repeat performance like that. Agreed. Harris going to get it again on second down. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. Partner, it's not often that I expect running backs to eclipse 100 yards in back-to-back -back games, but he left 100 way behind last week. I think he's going to do it again. I'm expecting 150 or more. And last week, AFC Offensive Player of the Week, so if he does what you say he might, maybe he'll get another one. Yeah, I think he's locked in. Got it here at the 29 on second and eight. Now Harris, about three yards there to the 27. So, Charles, you look at this offense, what a start to the season. Five wins without a loss. When do you think that you start believing that maybe you're in the midst of something special? Well, you and I both know every head coach never wants that thought to creep into a locker room. But the truth of the matter is, not quite at this time, because if we look at the Steelers in 2020, they're a great example. Remember, they started 11-0, then lost five of six and went out in the first round. But I think if you get toward mid-November, the Thanksgiving time frame, and you're still doing this, that's when things start to get real for a ball club. The field goal unit's going to stay put on the sideline. They're going to go on fourth down here. They run for it with Harris, and he will have the first before he's brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Well-executed fourth down conversion. Yeah, I know this will surprise you, but I've actually done a little bit of reading lately, and all the analytics say that you should go for it more on fourth down. I think someone has referred back to their analytics coach. Maybe he's got a pipeline into the booth because that was a really good play call. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. A give. This is Michelle. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. A couple of nice carries back-to-back -back here, establishing the ground game a bit. Yeah, these are bare-bones runs now. I mean, they're getting substantial yardage, the kind of yards you're looking for, right? Let's go ahead and use a cliche. Stay ahead of the change, right? Five more, five or more yards each time. That's what you're looking for in setting a tone and getting your offensive line going. Good sign on the opening drive. We're scoreless after one. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. This is Harris. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. They'll try to run with Harris. And he is in. Touchdown, New England. Damian Harris, his 14th touchdown now on the year. As his guys are first out of the scoreboard here this afternoon. Well, nothing fancy there, Charles. You had three tight ends on the field. They were going to run the football. The defense knew it, but the defense couldn't stop them. And I haven't met an offensive line yet that doesn't get more satisfaction out of running the football into the end zone than pass protecting. They had determination on their side, and they got it done. Tucker McCann now for the extra point. And he gets it to make it 7-0 Patriots. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it was Damian Harris who finished things off with a touchdown run. McCann's got it teed up. No effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. Back onto the field come the New York Jets for their second drive. 
And they come in losers of two straight. And remember, they've got the open date on their calendar next weekend. But you think it's vitally important, Charles, that they focus on the task at hand here. Absolutely, because these players, they know what's coming up. And the difference between taking time off following a win versus doing so on a three-game losing streak, that's absolutely huge because they may come back if they lose this game to a facility. And there may be new faces in there and some teammates lost. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. This to Hines on the drop off. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that'll make it second down. Throwing is Wilson. He's going to find his tight end. That's Chris Herndon. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. They go play action with Wilson. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. So much about defending the pass is being able to be right there the moment the ball gets to the receiver. And he was right in his hip pocket, helping force that incompletion. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. 23 yards the pick up there. Boy, an effective play there, getting their wideouts involved in the run game. And what they're always hoping on that type of a play, that they can get to the end of the line and have a chance to turn it upfield as he did there. That means they controlled the blocking and took care of the defensive end of the outside linebacker to give him that lane. And I guess I need to clarify, I said getting their wideouts involved in the run game, but of course that was actually a pass as he popped it forward. Four yards to go on second down from the seven. Now Wilson, and it's caught. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. And they'll let their fullback try and push the pile. And he's in. Touchdown, Jets. A great effort there with his first career NFL touchdown. And the Jets are an extra point away from tying this thing up. Now for the extra point, Daniel Carlson. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So that one, an eight-play drive, it spans 75 yards. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And it ends with a three-yard scoring run. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. Damian Harris to the Patriot offense, ready to take over again. And we checked the rushing numbers so far here into week six, and the returns have been really good. Now, you're starting to hit that stride middle of the season toward the end. They're certainly hoping they can keep up this production. They are because one of the adages in the NFL is that defense travels and defense endures even in bad weather, right? You know what else does? A good running game. And people want that, especially as you head down the stretch. You may play outdoors in some nasty stuff. You're trying to get to the playoffs. This is the time to get it going. And individually, I don't think you should just think about 1,000 yards either. The bar has to be set higher with this beginning. Well, these two teams, you might remember, met in Foxborough earlier in the season with the Patriots winning that ball game. So they're looking for another win here at MetLife Stadium to take the season series to zip. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. And result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game. Or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. 64 yards rushing for him now to this point. 
partner, in our years together, we've never really run into a player that's admitted a, a doubt or a lack of confidence, right? But right now, I'm just wondering about that interior line because on defense, they're starting to get manhandled at the point of attack. Do they have it in them to figure a way to reverse the tie? Because right now, they're running the ball at will. On second down, this is Harris. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and ten. Now Jones. The connection here with Nelson Aguilar. And with just one second remaining in the first half, they'll call the timeout. Jones. A final shot before break. He's got it complete to Aguilar. And the Patriots are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. So a touchdown apiece. That's what we have to show at halftime as they head to the locker room. 7-7 seven, seven our score. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks. A few teams starting to rise to the top as it's time to take you around the NFL here in week six. We'll begin down in South Florida. Cincinnati paying a call to Miami. And it's the Bengals who are out in front. T. Higgins, a touchdown reception. From there, we move to H-Town to check on the Texans at home at NRG Stadium. And they trail in that one as it's the visiting Jags who are out in front. Three touchdown passes there for Trevor Lawrence. Finally, we head to the shores of Lake Erie. See what's going on with the Cleveland Browns. And that one all tied against the visiting Saints. And okay, so much for our halftime break. Apparently we're gonna get right back to it. Set and ready to go for the second half. One touchdown apiece, 7-7 our score. Fielded just outside the goal line. The Patriots taking over to start quarter number three. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys are tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. So right now what I'm seeing, I'm seeing an offense just firing off the ball a lot quicker than they can react. And not only that, they're sustaining the blocks too. I'm seeing guys get six, seven yards downfield before there's even a hint of contact. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Consecutive plays now where that offensive line has really created a lot of space. And we've seen the confidence rise, haven't we? It borders on arrogance now, and that's that good arrogance, believing you can run the football whenever you get good and ready. And he'll be taken down right around the 41-yard line. 104 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. On second down now. It's Harris, and this time not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Now a first down carry for Harris. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Well, partner, they've been running it well the entire game, and the big guys up front, they're a huge reason why. And now they're reaping the benefits as they continue to open up big holes and gain nice yardage. On second down, Michelle. 
They follow up the gain of five by only getting one there on second down. What a luxury to have a guy like this who can not only spell your starter, but can come in and keep drives going. And it's Michelle once again. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy. Let him pick up the first down. On first down, it's Harris. And he'll take this down for about four yards down to the 15. I think that run gives us evidence that the defense is getting a little bit tired out there. They've been out on the field for a long time, and that last run, they just cut right through them. Again, it's Harris on second down. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. Damian Harris with touchdown number 15 on the year and second of the game. And the Patriots have taken the lead. Well, hard to argue with that being their best drive of the game so far as they use the running game to get them into the end zone. Couldn't agree more, partner, prior to that drive. They sputtered a little bit, but it looks like they found the formula. I would expect them to go back to that more and more as this game develops. Extra point by McCann, up and good, and that makes the score 14-7. to McCann's got it teed up. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. Here's the Jets offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. And this game was all square at halftime, but now they find themselves down seven following the opening drive touchdown here in the third quarter. And they need to take a good, relaxing, deep breath, don't you think? Because right now they might start to feel like they've got to play catch up here and start matching them point for point. But it's still too early to get there. They can still run their offense. Plenty of time to get back in this game. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. But the passing windows are just not there, and that's just another example of how great this defense has been all game long. And that's exactly what a top-10 defense can do. They can really change the game tempo and frustrate you as you try to execute offensively. A nice return that time of about 14 yards. Damian Harris to the Patriot offense, ready to take over again. He's up over 100 yards, and he'll be looking to get in the end zone again. Has a tremendous nose for it, doesn't he? The ability to pile up yardage and find the end zone, that's the combination you want in your runner. That's a combination any coach wants, and we'll see if he can find that end zone once more. They turn to Harris to begin the drive. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. 148 yards rushing for him so far in this one as he nears 1,400 for the year. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. On the ground, it's Harris. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Second down and eight. On the give, this is Harris. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third and one situation. to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. 
Well, sometimes, Brent, there's just not a secret to how things get done. He's been running well all game long, and they continue to rely on him in this key situation. They told us they were going to rely on him. They have. He comes through there, a big third down conversion. And down to the 44, five yards that time. Good gain there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for them, ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. This is third and two. Maybe the biggest play in this football game. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he will have a Patriots first down by a couple of yards as they're able to get four there on third and two. Well, they didn't accomplish their goal. They didn't get a stop there, gave up another first down. They have all three timeouts in their pocket. I think defensively, you've got to start thinking about using them here. I was just going to ask you at what point you think now's the go time? I think now's the go time. I don't think you sit back and wait because they can take a lot of time off the clock between plays and run three to four and really put you in a stressful spot. Second and four. They run with Harris. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. And that's the type of run that they're looking for because they'll need to continue to rely on him to move the sticks in this tight game in order to preserve this lead. They'll run on first down. Harris. The linebacker, C.J. Mosley, in on the stop. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Patriots with the football as we get you reset. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. A give to Harris. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Whistles now and a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 151 left. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Here's Harris. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. The Jets going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. On third down, here's Harris. And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. Give him three yards there as that'll take us to fourth down. Now that was a big time play by the defense. They as well knew where the first down line was and they didn't let him get anywhere near it. This offense converted once on fourth down earlier. Now they're out there again to try once more. They're going for it. This is Harris. And try to push his way forward, but I think he's going to be short. And he is short. They'll get neither the touchdown nor the first down. And the Jets are going to get the football back. So that's a decision that could loom pretty large here. They go for it on fourth down, but come up empty. But I actually like the call. And the reason? It shows me a head coach has faith in his team overall, first on the offensive side, thinking they can pick it up, but also knowing that he has faith in his defense that if they don't, they'll go out there and stop him. I like the confidence he showed. There have been quite a few plays they might look back on and say, we really 
have hurt ourselves, and that was another example. And this is late game execution. Everything on the line, so it all has to come together properly. The throw is made. Where's the catch? Got to catch in that spot. Now a throw here, hold in. And they'll get him down up past the 15. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Throwing now is Wilson. Pass complete to Hines. And he'll be out of bounds near the 30. In fact, right on the 30. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up a first down there for the offense. They're hoping that that's something they can jumpstart with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half. Ooh, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. Meanwhile, Wilson's throw complete into the hands of Schultz here. And he'll be brought down after a gain of about nine and compounding things. It's now third down as well. And that's complete to Davis. And he will get out of bounds with 23 seconds to play as he does pick up a first down. Well, they got the yardage they needed there. Picked up the first down, got out of bounds. How about the urgency that they have as well as the understand where they are in the field? Now Wilson. It's complete. He dials up Davis once more. Now this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. And here come the whistles and a timeout with seven seconds left. Wilson to throw. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Schultz. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So for the Pats, they remain as hot as anyone, 6-0 now through the first month and a half. And they'll get another road date next week as their opponents will be the Pit.
today. From Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, it's week seven of the NFL on EA Sports. Marcus Mariota and the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on Mac Jones and the New England Patriots. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to Western Pennsylvania and Heinz Field in the Steel City of Pittsburgh. This was the scene just a few moments ago as the Pittsburgh faithful were fired up by the hometown Steelers taking the field. They're all set as they'll match up with the New England Patriots. toward the halfway point of the NFL season. Week 7 is underway on EA Sports. And here comes a return from just beyond. And look at this. Right away, a loose football. So the Steelers offense getting set for their first drive. Orchestrating the offense will be their versatile quarterback, the Hawaii native Oregon Duck product. Of course, that's Marcus Mariota. And what a first half of the season he's had, leading the NFL in passing yards to this point. It's been a tough man to slow down. So this defense certainly has its work cut out for him. Mariota on first down. They'll find Juju Smith-Schuster. He's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. They'll come up now on second and a yard. And they'll run for the first time with Najee Harris. A look at the numbers for Harris in last week's game. 17 carries, 135 yards, and a touchdown. And give him a ton of credit. He's running the ball really well. But I look at those guys up front. That unit is truly playing as just that. Every move that they make, their teammate understands what that move means and what they need to do. And right now, they're starting to grind it out pretty well. Defensively here, you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high powered, You've got to find a way to hold them under 20, because to me, that's the magic number. 20 points scored gives yourself your, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. I think so, because then you turn it into a shootout, and that means your offense has to keep pace. A first down throw for Mariota. 
Looking for Johnson, and it's intercepted. It's Kyler Duggar who picks it. And they are going to take over right there at the 22-yard line. the former member of the Crimson Tide, Damian Harris. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Last week, of course, the great performance, over 200 yards. He still wants to be fed. And they should. That's exactly what you should do. I have not yet met a running back that's run for over 200 yards that says the very next week it is back thing down. Yeah, I don't need it as much. No, they want it more and more. They're going to be ready to go because they think that's going to happen naturally now. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. They hand this off to Harris. And some room to work. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Relatively small sample size, but that's his longest run of the first quarter. Bounced it out to the outside to make it successful. And to get there, you actually need some help. It's not just your pure speed getting to the corner, making sure that the blocking is taken care of inside so the pursuit doesn't get you. And oftentimes, those wide receivers, tight ends that might be flexed out, they've got to control the edge and make sure no one from the outside can spill the play before he gets there. This defense for the Steelers, they played really well in the win over the Raiders a week ago. It was a little bit enlightening talking with the defense coordinator about their performance last week because the feeling was that it was a good, solid performance. They did what they needed to do to get the job done and get the win, but definitely a few lapses that they're looking to correct. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. 48 yards on the ground for him so far. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and 10. This is Harris. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. But Charles, you know, something we talked about last week, when you start believing whether you're in the midst of a special season or not, well, now they're at 6-0. and Are you still trying to tamp down the expectations in that locker room? Well, to me, it's less about tamping down expectations and much more about not getting ahead of yourself as a team. And look, they've got to play each game individually, right? Many teams talk about being 1-0 and at the end of each and every game each week. To me, you've got to understand you cannot win the Super Bowl in October. Play number seven coming on this drive. It's third and inches. Harris. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. If you make the stop there, maybe you hold him to three on this opening drive. They didn't get the stop. Yeah, new set of downs now. Now you're worried about, just as you pointed out, not just giving up three, possibly giving up six. Let's see what they decide to do here because they've got to change up what they have been doing. It hasn't been working. The safety, Keanu Neal there to make the tackle. No score after one on EA Sports. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. They'll run with Harris. This carry, despite the extra effort, will be stopped short of the ten. Two yards the gain there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. This is Harris. And he has the first down before he's tackled at the five. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. First and goal, a chance to convert that early turnover into points. They run with Harris. And he's over the line into the end zone for a Patriot score. Damian Harris with his 16th touchdown of the year. And they are able to strike first here on their opening drive.
In as many coaches' meetings as we sit in, we hear the word finish all the time, don't we? And on that play, the back actually finished getting into the end zone, breaking the last tackle. Tried to wrap up, tried to use the proper technique, just wasn't able to get it done. And here's Tucker McCann now for the PAT. And he gets it to make it 7-0 Patriots. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And it was Damian Harris who finished things off with a touchdown run. McCann's got it teed up. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he's going to get this across the 20 as he's out of bounds at the 23. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And they have the game here followed by the open date on their calendar next weekend. And Charles, this is a crew that you have to think really is relishing the opportunity to be on the couch for a few days. Yeah, they certainly are. But let's face it, partner. They can't get caught looking ahead to that couch time while they're playing this one. They've got to take care of business first. On second down, this is Harris. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and 10. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. It'll be a loss of two, maybe three on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Well, Brandon, we could see that play developing, and they were hoping that he was going to be able to put a move on the first guy and turn it into a big play, but no such luck. The speed on defense continues to get better and better in the NFL. Pretty nice example there of those guys being able to run from their assignments and finish off that play. The Steelers send out their punter now as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. Fielded just inside the 20. And bulldozing his way through. A good return there, 17 yards. And the Patriots take over. Damian Harris to the Patriot offense, ready to take over again. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. And he doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back, and that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. They'll start the drive with Harris. Finding some room at midfield. And he's in. Touchdown, Patriots. Damian Harris, his second touchdown of the game, 17th on the year. And the Patriots are able to strike quickly for six. It's not much as perfect in football, but that's about as close to it as you're going to get. Score, force a punt, score again. And both drives were impressive. The opening drive was, that last one was. Now on the other side, though, what's your psyche? You're really behind the eight ball. You got to make sure to just hold in there. Survive the early storm, relax a little bit, and try and get back to your game plan. It's way too early for panic. Extra point by McCann, up and good. And it's now 14 to nothing. McCann's got it teed up. Returnable here for Davis. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And they are right at the 500 mark on the year and got there with a the victory a week ago. And I think right now I put myself in the shoes of the head coach and say, all right, time to reset a little bit. And I don't give my team a win one for the Gipper speech, but I do say, look, we haven't played our best football yet, but we are at 500 and we're still in it. Let's try and string a few of these victories together and we're capable of doing so. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Mariota now. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Here's Mariota. 
The Pats are going to get there. Down he goes. Byron Coward coming in to drop him for a loss of eight. And it also brings up four. When you're down a couple of scores like this, CD, you can't afford too many plays that go in the wrong direction like that one. Yeah, when you take a good look at it broadly, sacks are better than giving up an interception. But where they are on the scoreboard, they've got to get rid of all of that and just create positive plays for themselves in order to have a chance. Got the punter Bailey on now as he sends this one away. He'll field this at the five. 157 to go in this first half on EA Sports. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. And he'll take this one up over the 20 to the 21-yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Now Harris, and he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. So third and two, and I count six defensive backs out there. They'll run. Here's Harris. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. 155 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. And he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck 50 now. And this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained. Now a first down carry, it's Michelle. It's a six yard pickup and it gets him to second and four. Now Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. And he takes this up right near the 45 yard line. Now the Patriots gonna use one of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. Third and inches, and they've got some extra beef up front. Three tight ends. On the ground, it's Harris. And he brings this up to the 46. Good enough for the first. Now the Patriots will use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. On the give, this is Harris. And he'll get this one across midfield and down into Steeler territory. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. The Patriots will take their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. Second and a couple. Jones. That ball's caught. Aguilar right side. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 28. So at halftime, it's the Patriots with the advantage. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. A lot to get to here as some of the division races starting to take shape as we look around the NFL here in week number seven. We start with the battle of East versus West in the NFC. Philadelphia playing host to Seattle. And in the second quarter, it is the Eagles who are out in front. Demarcus Robinson up near 100 yards receiving with a touchdown as well. From there, we'll head down to Charlotte to check on the Panthers at home at Bank of America Stadium. And they've got the lead in that ball game over the visiting 49ers. Christian McCaffrey has a touchdown there. 
Lastly, let's get you to MetLife Stadium to see what's happening with the Giants at home in East Rutherford. And they've got the lead over the visiting Houston Texans. Two touchdowns there for Saquon Barkley. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back-and-forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half for the answer? We turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you. We welcome everyone back for quarter number three. 
So here we go for half number two. The Patriots with the lead, and they will be getting the football. And he will not bring it out. It's a touchback. The Pats at the line, ready to go. Harris starts the drive on the ground. And he'll work this forward for about three. It's second down. Not a lot of running room there. Not a place to make a cut and kind of exit out because they had everything bottled up. Looked to me like the linemen were taking on their blocks really well and giving up no creases. Harris going to get it again on second down. And this will go for five up to the 33. A couple extra tight ends in the formation here as they line up third and two. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. He lost two and it brings up four. And that's what this defense is going to need to do more in the second half. Good pressure that time. Forces some indecision in the backfield. He's going to wind up being taken down for a nice loss. So they're going to come to the line here, and it appears try to go for it on four. They run for it with Harris. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Oh, on the defensive side, that is so deflating. Not only is it deflating, they've got to look at each other's eyes on that side of the ball and take each other's measure. You've got them backed up, perfect situation. And what they said to you on the other side is, we don't think you can stop us. Went ahead and got it in that position. That should never happen. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. A give to Harris. He'll pick up only a yard there, and it'll leave him with a third and seven. But now they're in a spot that every team tells us when we have our production meetings they don't want to be in third and long. And that's because those back-to-back -back running plays just didn't accomplish a whole lot. On third down, Michelle. And he's going to have a Patriots first down as he's got this up to the 45-yard line. Pardon, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get them. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for him. Show him that you're supposed to get the football. Keeping it on the ground on first, Michelle. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Good, strong run against the 3-4 set. And that 3-4... You've got to have your guys up front eat up a lot of blocks. The guy playing over the center, the nose, he usually has to take on double teams. But when you're able to successfully move him, you're often able to get some yardage, and that's when linebackers have to clean up and make tackles. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Here's Harris. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Third down, here's Harris. So he fought off the tackle, and that effort gives him the first before he's brought down. Boy, 199 yards rushing for him now to this point. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. They hand this off to Harris. And they'll work this down to the 15 for a pickup of four. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports.
The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. This is Harris. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what we said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. They'll run with Harris. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. That didn't just feel like good defense there. That felt like pride, didn't it? He's already gotten into the end zone twice, trying to get there for a third time. No one likes to have the hat trick against them. Harris. And Harris is not going to get there. Great work defensively to stop him short. What a stand so far defensively. And now that's going to bring up a fourth and goal. This is a long drive offensively. Wouldn't you hate to end this with just three points? Doesn't it feel like during a ball game you have certain narratives going on and there's certain drives that seem to take on just a bit more importance than others? This feels like one of those, doesn't it? To me, three points here, a major letdown. This is the time to go and put six on the board. They're going for it. This is Harris. And he's not going to get there. They tackle him at the two. They gave it to him in search of his third touchdown, but he's denied. And the Steeler D will celebrate the goal line stand. Defensively, you said coming in earlier in the broadcast, the magic number was 20 points for you. That's what you thought they would have to hold this offense to, or, or less than that. And wow, they've done that in a big way, haven't they? Not only have they done it, they put themselves in a great position to win this one because holding them down was paramount. If they could get it done, well, guess what? We see the end result. Right now, they have their eye on victory. And leading here in the fourth. To throw on second and six, Mariota. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to. Pick up a first down. On first and ten, here's Mariota. And incomplete. Got out of the pocket. Didn't look like he had anybody open, Charles, so just gets rid of it. And a good play by him. If no one's open and you don't have a running lane that you want to take, make the right choice. Get rid of it. Live to fight another down. Second and ten. <laughs> From the shotgun, it's Mariota. His throw incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. To the air again, Mariota. And he's unable to haul it in. So it falls incomplete over the middle third of the field, and that brings up fourth. After watching him drop that slant, I can hear my old coach's voice ringing in my ears right now. You can't run with the ball until you catch it. Trying to get those rack yards before he secured it. Desperation time. Mariota on fourth down. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. Mike Tomlin takes a shot here, but to no avail. And now possession will go over inside the 15-yard line. So now with a little over two minutes to play, the road back gets very difficult. Difficult, but still not impossible if they go ahead and play this thing out. Now the defense has to come up big. They've got to go for the strip of the football on each and every snap to try and give themselves a chance. And he's brought down. My goodness, 229 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Patriots with the football as we get you reset. They've got it first and goal in a game that appears to have already been. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. Damian Harris 
Excellent work there to get in on the touchdown run. And the Patriots add on to their lead, and it's looking like that win streak is going to extend another week. Well, business as usual for them, well on their way to another victory, riding a serious wave of momentum from what we've seen. And so far, they haven't met their match. So if you're going to play this team in the future, your mission is clear. You better be ready to play and match their firepower. Extra point by McCann, up and good, and it's now 21 to nothing. Well, they got the ball in great field position. One play later, boom, end zone. another fumble he'll sit on this one it's a touchback the Steelers ready to take over on offense and just looking ahead it would appear that that bye week is coming at the right time they'll have two weeks to chew on this one though probably not one that they want to chew on a poor performance from start to finish now the pass finding its way into the hands of Eric Ebron yeah this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30 from the 30 on second down, Mariota, and he drops it incomplete, and their struggles continue here. It's been that kind of a day so far throwing the football. It just seems like nothing going right offensively. Yeah, it's a catch that should have been made, pure and simple, and look, everything else that goes into running a good pass. The throw for Claypool is intercepted. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore, and they have the football and will set up shop at the 33-yard line. So many times we end a game, and as we're recapping it, we're talking about what offenses did and how they won the game. Let's flip this one over. The defense, they frustrated the offense the entire ball game. That's why they're walking out of here with a victory. And they're going to love to walk out of here with that as their final act, that interception. Good way for them to end it. So they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And this will leave them a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. I know you're trying to wring every yard out of a run, but I think nine yards there is ideal in this situation. Yeah, now next couple plays, you only need one yard. Keep that clock rolling with a lead here in the four. Yeah, and what you're saying is maybe if it takes you one or two more runs to get the first down, that's extra time, extra plays. Really hurts the team on defense. Again, it's Harris on second down. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. I've got an idea. Let's skip racing to the airport at the end of this game. Let's go to the post-game press conference. I have a feeling that the quarterback of this winning team is going to be giving a whole lot of credit to the running game and the offensive line. Yeah, I was just going to say the offensive line, yes, carrying the ball has been key, but those guys up front, they've made a lot of space. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. They run with Harris. Pushing his way through. And he will reach the eight yard line before going out. Brandon, every great running backs coach I've talked with has always talked about when you have great vision, you're not consciously thinking about your cuts and your moves. You're just doing them. And I think that's what we're seeing tonight. He's about running them into submission. And he's in. Touchdown, Patriots. Damian Harris, an eight-yard touchdown run. And the Pats are closing in now on a seventh straight win to start the year. And for them, this train, it just keeps rolling, doesn't it? Well on their way to yet another victory. Yeah, it's almost a runaway, isn't it? And you just wonder how anyone could stop this. They got full momentum going, full confidence going. But it's not just their own confidence that is leading them. It's the lack of confidence against their opponents now because they see them coming and think, we've got no shot to beat this team.
McCann's got it teed up. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the inline. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. And let's face it, this drive is not going to have any bearing on this game, but it's kind of important for one reason, isn't it? It certainly is. you got to get points. And, okay, all right, I'm being facetious here. But you get points, you feel a little bit better about yourself as you move on to the next one. Now it's second and nine. Mariota. Throw left side complete. That's Harris. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. And now with four seconds left, we get a timeout call. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. One last shot now from Mariota. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. One final shot. They'll look to throw. He's going to let it fly. And that will be incomplete. As time has run out on this football game. So this will wind up a victory for the New England Patriots, and this was truly a total team effort, Charles, on both sides of the ball. No, they absolutely pitched a shutout, so it can't get much better than that, right? The defense led the way, but the offense did their part as well. They moved the ball up and down the field, so you've got to like what you saw. What do they call that, a total team effort? I think when it's time to hand out game balls, guys from both sides will end up getting one. So for New England, their winning ways continue as they get it up to 7-0. And, oh. and they'll get another road test next week as they head to Baltimore to take on the Ravens. <laughs> Meanwhile, for the Steelers, they fall a game under the 500 mark at 3-4 and four through seven games. And they'll get an extra week to think about it as the midseason bye might be coming at just the right time. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, we thank our entire crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. This is the NFL on EA Sports.
Tonight, from M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland, it's Week 8 of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens taking on Mac Jones and the New England Patriots. The rain is falling, the fans are soaked, but here's the bottom line. We've got football at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland. The two teams emerging from their respective tunnels a minute ago to the approval of this Baltimore crowd. They're all set as their Ravens will match up with the New England Patriots. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you look at this Raven team as they get ready here. We're in October now, so everything, everybody should be coming into form, shouldn't they? They really should. And what you have now is a full routine established about what you want to get done and full focus on the season. Lurching closer toward the midway point of this NFL season, and we're underway on EA Sports. And he almost flirted with disaster there, but it does get into the end zone before going out, and they'll bring it out to the 25. Play fake. Here's Jackson. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Brown. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. The numbers for Brown from a week ago, five catches, 79 yards. And he was able to get open there, but that's not always easy against this bunch defensively. We are deep enough into the season where numbers count. This is number one rated defense in the NFL. He'll have a tough time. It's a loss of two, now third down. This defense is a difficult one to prepare for, one of the best in the league. They'll come at you from all angles, and they did a nice job there stopping him for a loss. They'll try to run for it with Dobbins. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. That'll back him up two yards and also bring up fourth. So opening drive, three straight runs, unable to pick up the first. I know the fans want to see first downs, but guess what? The coaches have reasons for what they're doing. Sometimes they've scripted it. And some of these runs, while they haven't been successful now, they may be successful later on. This is taken at about the 14. A very nice punt that time, but they get 11 back on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. So here come the Patriots getting ready on offense. 
They're led by their quarterback from the University of Alabama, Mac Jones. In his stat line last week, that's not going to get him to the Pro Bowl. All right, no touchdowns, no interceptions, but they won. And so the bottom line for him is team one, managed the game effectively, led him to victory. He's doing all the right things. Malik Harrison on the tackle. So Charles, you know, offensively, this group really playing at a high level, 7-0. And we're still a long ways from discussing a potential unbeaten season, I think. But to use a golf expression, no blemishes on the card, at least to this point. Yeah, unlike my teenage years where there were blemishes everywhere and the dermatologist was on speed dial. But I do think that they're going to have to start answering questions about this start if they keep winning games. You and I both know, we in the media, we'll start to obsess about it and wonder, can they take it all the way to an undefeated season? And he's going to have a Patriots first down as the tackle made just shy of the 40. Well, they're currently the best in the NFL in converting on third down, so it was no surprise there that they picked that one up. And they've done it in many different ways throughout the season, Charles. Picking it up, running it, throwing it, just effective on third downs all year long. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Nothing too fancy, just a carry up the middle, but a successful carry up the middle against this 3-4 defense. And to be able to do that, what do you have to control? The nose guard, right? Got to be able to move him, otherwise you're not getting anything up the middle. Nice job by the center. Got a little help from one of his friends playing guard. So back-to-back -back big runs, picking apart this defense on the opening drive. I thought this was a passing league. I thought this was the era we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. They didn't get the memo, and I know this to be true. Offensive linemen still, to this day, they want to run the football. They want to fire out and hit people across the line of scrimmage, and they're clearing space. A look at the numbers for Harrison last week's game. Just downright unbelievable. I mean, when you amass that many yards, I don't know what else to say. Personally, I thought it was a game for the ages for him. Ripped off some long runs in that contest. He did indeed. Some very long runs, and that total scary. Well, to me, that's taking a big gamble defensively because that alignment you see, that's normally something you see down near the goal line because now if they decide to go play action, something should be open there, and I think open big. So maybe that's something that gets filed away for later. I think without a doubt, you write it down, and if you see that look at a later date, go ahead and take your shot. 51 yards rushing for him now as he has gotten the night off to a hot start. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and 10. Harris. The tackle goes there to Linval Joseph. We're scoreless after one. Second and nine. On the ground, it's Harris. And he's going to be down close to a first down at the Ravens 15-yard line. Calling an eight-yard gain. Much better shape now on third and just a yard. The give this is Harris and they work this near the five he'll be stopped at the six although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him it's always fun to watch him work it is eye-opening isn't it because when you see him get the ball and just go in addition to that speed it helps out his blockers they don't have to hold blocks for long because he's just going to speed right past them It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. They'll try to run with Harris, and he is in. Touchdown, New England. Damian Harris with touchdown number 20 on the year as his guys are on the board first here tonight.
Second effort there, he was determined to find pay dirt, and he did. I think that's a great example of what coaches talk about, a back that runs behind his pads, and he uses pads to get him into the end zone. Tucker McCann now for the extra point. And he gets it to make it 7-0 Patriots. So that drive spans 13 plays. And it was Damian Harris who finished things off with a touchdown run. McCann's got it teed up. Takes it at the 7. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. And they sit now at 500 on the year. And Charles, this was a team that really looked lost in that first month or so of the season. But they have had the hot hand lately, winning three straight. I would agree. It's almost hard to believe that this is the same team because we followed them pretty closely throughout this season. And early on, I know I thought this is going to be a really tough year for this crew. So plenty of credit to them for turning the ship around. From the 35 on second down, Jackson. That ball caught. It's Mark Andrews, the tight end. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. A big play that time on the catch and run. And that might be exactly what they needed to wake up this home crowd. They haven't given them much to cheer for so far. And never underestimate the effect the home crowd with you can have on a game. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Well, every now and then we have to let a cliche fly, partner. And in this case, what do they say in the NFL? Your best ability is often your availability. This is an extremely durable kid coming out of Ohio State. Carried the ball every time they even thought about running it. Wore down defenses and able to break big runs late in games. J.K. Dobbins going to Baltimore, an absolute perfect fit. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. Coming up in a couple of minutes, we'll get you to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. The coach will have stats and scores from earlier today in the NFL. Dancing to his left. They'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Lamar Jackson with his 16th touchdown of the year. And the Ravens are an extra point away from tying the football game. Well, that was all Lamar Jackson all the time on that drive, both through the air and in the end with the touchdown run. Yeah, how about him doing things a little bit on the reverse side there, Brandon, because he softened him up throwing the football and opened up the running lanes. And when he gets a little bit of a sliver, he's gone. And that's exactly what he did there. Justin Tucker for the extra point. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it was capped off by the touchdown run that came from Lamar Jackson. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. And he'll just take a seat and the drive will begin at the 25 yard line. So back onto the field come the Pats for their second drive. And that last drive, it was all about the ground game, ground and pound. And I don't care how we're playing the game these days, offensive linemen still want to fire out and smack the guy opposite them and move the football on the ground. They feel better about that. That's what they want to do. That's how they want to play, and that's how they got it done. Yeah, they got it for a touchdown last drive. Let's see what happens here. They'll start the drive with Harris. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. 
So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Now Harris. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. 89 yards for him on the ground so far tonight as he has been terrific in this first half. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They run with Harris. Room to run past midfield. And all the way in. Touchdown, New England. Damian Harris. His 21st touchdown of the season, and the Patriots have taken the lead. Of course, he's fresh off the Offensive Player of the Week in the AFC, and what a game it was last week, and a long touchdown run right there. He and his offensive line, the receivers blocking downfield, they're all in sync right now. Could carry him to a second straight Player of the Week award. Footing always a concern, but the extra point's up and good. And that makes the score 14 to 7. McCann's got it teed up. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. You got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You could never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. So the incompletion, and now it's second and 10, again from the 25-yard line. Here's Jackson to throw. He's got his man, it's Andrews. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. From the gun, it's Jackson. And this is going to be incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right, they did something to disrupt that timing. Here's Sam Cook now, as he's on to punt for Baltimore. This is away and a very good kick, angled for the sidelines. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Damian Harris to the Patriot offense, ready to take over again. Pats at the line, ready to go. And with a 14-7 lead, they might just be happy to take this thing on into the tunnel. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. Back to back good plays have them on the move on first down. This is Harris. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. So at halftime, it's the Patriots with the advantage. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! Okay. Well, why don't we hold off on the halftime update after all? Seems like everyone's ready to go here for the second half in Week 8 in the NFL. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. And we will not see a return to start the half as this will be a touchback. So here are the Patriots to take over. They've got the lead right now. And remember, they are riding that very impressive seven-game winning streak, trying to push it to eight. A handoff to Harris to begin the drive. 
He'll have a first down past the 40. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And all the way in. Touchdown, New England. Damian Harris. Touchdown number 22 on the season. And the Patriots come right out of the locker room and score here in the opening minute of the third quarter. And we didn't even get a chance to settle in for that drive. A quick strike of 75 yards, and they find the end zone. Don't you get the sense that film study was behind this one, that they saw something that they thought they could take advantage of? The key is calling it in the right situation. Knowing when it exists to go to it, they did exactly that. They've got to feel really good about what they did in advance of this game. Just looking down at the sideline now, their defense is like, man, can you have strung that out just a few <laughs> plays? Give us a break. Back out there. Hey, man, give that water break and get on out there and play. Another attempt now from five yards further back. It's good, and it is now 21-7. to One of the shortest drives you'll ever see. One play, 75 yards, six points. McCann's got it teed up. Right after the touchdown to extend their lead, now maybe opening the door a little bit there by allowing starting field position at the 40. And that drives coaches insane, doesn't it? When they see that happen, it just, it just doesn't feel right, does it? Plus, you're giving up yardage. Play action. Now Jackson. Out right, this is Boyle, the tight end. That catch good for only a couple. On second down, a run with Dobbins. And he'll push his way up to about the 44 here. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. On third down, Jackson. And that is incomplete. Uh, we're into the second half now. This is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. Now this is fielded in the end zone. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. The Pats at the line ready to go. And coming off a one-play drive that was so deflating for the defense, what, what's their mentality? How do they rally here and stop this offense? Well, hopefully there's some determination that sets in because I, they weren't ready to go on the last one. Give all the credit to the offensive guys for getting it done, but to allow a run of that length, that's just not being prepared. So now, are they determined? Are they ready to read their keys and make the proper plays? And we'll see how determined they are. Now, maneuver there and I think that's because everyone took care of their responsibilities filled their gaps held their place no place for him to run yeah look good everything got funneled to the nose tackle they swallowed him up then he's going to have a Patriots first down as he'll take this up to the 38 yard line he continues to have a big night here under the lights carrying the football. And some guys prefer night games. For whatever reason, their bodies react a certain way. They love the spotlight. Maybe that's what it is. The best seats in the house, the ones where he's carrying the football for his offensive teammates, the worst seats, the 11 guys trying to tackle him on defense. And the 
He's turning in a pretty impressive performance running the football and a big reason why they have this nice lead. And in days gone by, we would clip this out and put it up on the refrigerator, wouldn't we? Clip out the box score. Nowadays, not too many newspapers out there. Maybe you screenshot it online. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. On second down, this is Harris. And he's going to be down close to a first down at the Ravens' 40-yard line. And while the guys with the ball are having a whole lot of fun keeping it on the ground, the guys on the opposite side, they are having zero fun. They've been getting pushed around the entire game and haven't found an answer yet to slow down the running game. Could be four down territory even if they don't get this, but they need just a few inches here on third. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. A yeah, great effort there to shed the contact, and it helps him pick up the first. I always appreciate runners who understand situations. That was just third and inches. No reason to dance around in the backfield and try and break off a bigger play. Just go pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They hand this off to Harris. Linebacker Patrick Queen bringing him down. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. They'll run. Here's Harris. A one-yard gain there following the three-yard pickup on first down. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times. And what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. On third down, here's Harris. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. down carry for Harris strong run but still wrangled before reaching the 20 it's a pickup of four and it'll bring up second down I'm sure that that's going to be the formula just keep the ball on the ground keep that clock moving and when you have the lead this late in the game above all stay in bounds yes take care of the football yes gain yardage but stay in bounds and let that clock tick and he's going to be down close to a first down at the Ravens' 18-yard line. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he's going to get about four down inside the ten to the nine. Able to stay in bounds, so the clock keeps rolling. This defense right now backed up in the red zone. Another touchdown, it's over. They've got to stand tall quickly. Been in this spot before. Now there's a little bit of desperation creeping in, and all you're doing when you're talking to your defensive teammates is first guy there, hold him up. Second, third guy in, break it the football. Get it out. We've got to create a turnover because one more score, and this game's over. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. Harris. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. Damian Harris with touchdown number 23 here on the year. And the Patriots add on to their lead, and it's looking like that win streak is going to extend another week. Extra point by McCann, up and good. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. Here we go. 
McCann's got it teed up. Takes it at the seven. And up to about the 26 yard line, just across the 25. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. Remember, they have won three straight, but getting to four straight does not appear to be in the cards as they are in a big fourth quarter hole. And his throw's gonna be incomplete. Another pass attempt, another incompletion. You, you figure defensively, you're in the fourth quarter here, you've held the team under 100 yards passing. You've done your job. Especially in today's NFL, which is truly a pass-first league. The throw here to Andrews, the tight end. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. to mark him down at the 39. Offense for them has been at a premium. You wonder where plays like that have been all game long. They're thinking the exact same thing themselves, but they're also looking forward now because now these plays are really for next week, trying to get some momentum going. A gain of six there on first. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. They're looking at second down now as they search for a consolation score. Jackson's throw into the hands of Andrews. Now they got to get to the line quickly. And Jackson throwing once more. Jackson hit, and he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Patriots. And they'll set up shop right near midfield at the 49-yard line. All right, you've had to put up with me in this booth. I'm going to try and be simple this time and succinct. It simply has not been their night. No, I think that fumble's kind of indicative of how this whole evening's gone, isn't it? Without a doubt. I mean, they've, they've tried, <laughs> but nothing has ever really taken throughout the game. That's why they're down so big. First down, Harris. <laughs> Still fighting. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. Well, we're beyond the tone setting right now. This guy's been the bell cow all day, and he'll continue to rely on him to move the chains, drain the clock, and lead his team. They'll run with Harris. Oh, big hole left side. And out of bounds all the way down at the three. They had a chance to limit his yardage, but he was able to fight off that tackle. So it's not just the responsibility of the guys who missed the tackles along the way. It's all 11 on defense, able to stop this guy, unable to do it on that play. They've got to find a way. How about his ability to break through and gain that yardage? And he'll get him a bit closer as he's down to the two-yard line. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. They'll try and run with Harris. And this is not going to do it as he stopped at the two-yard line. No gain on the play there. They're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is the time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. So this will wind up a victory for the New England Patriots. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. 
Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out. So for the Patriots,